Alright, this is my uh, follow-up video to my uh, turntable problems. Uh, I've managed to uh, repair the Stoyer pimple. Uh, I've used a, uh, a bit of a coax cable and I managed to squeeze it uh, at the correct position. It turns out that the uh, original pimple was completely gone. Well, I will now demonstrate. Um, I'll do start. Well, I have to put a little bit of weight on the tone arm. No, I can't do this this way. Um, I'll install the cartridge and see whether that works. Alright, I uh, reinstalled the cartridge with a uh, protective uh, cover around the uh, stylus. Now let's see, I still need to assist it a little bit. It's not completely perfect yet. As you can see it's not moving that because uh, somehow it still doesn't want to lift up. Problem is I can't I need to use two hands to do this. So I'll try again and I'll do this and I'll let's see what happens. Oh it wants to go back. Oh here you see it's moving. Well it's almost good and if I uh, where to move it manually? Well, let's put it in a laboratory position. Oh, it doesn't work well. Let's put it somewhere around the stop position and let's see what happens. You see, the shutoff mechanism is fine. That works. But still not perfect. There's still a little issue there. Let's try 45 mode. Oh, hit start. Let's see what happens. Hey, that's better. There is something in the 33 position. But you see, it, it wants to move back, and well, then it grinds to a halt. There is still something in the fine adjustments with the stoy pimple, perhaps the weight of the tone arm. Uh, can't really put my finger on it. There's still a few issues. Now let's have a look underneath. Oh, by the way, this uh, adjustment screw is completely stuck and I've tried to mangle with it. And this is also an interesting screw. This one is for the queuing uh, lever. Uh, it affects basically this thing here. Um, so with this screw you can raise the whole si mechanism uh, by about 6 millimeters, and it also affects uh, this little piston here and as you can see this is, this is something you can turn and that also affects how much it can lift. Now let's look underneath. So let's try to film this from the underside. It's very difficult to get a good shot at this. Uh, you see that the pimple still is too a little bit too short. You see it's not working yet. Let's try that again. Again the, the white part. Uh, let's see if I can point at it. Uh, I have a little mirror here. You see this, this white thingy here. Uh, let's get a screwdriver. This white part here, where my screwdriver tip is, it, that's the pimple, and that, I think that one is still a little bit too short. You see, it's not. If the pimple has enough friction and the right length, it will actually uh, move this part like this. That's essentially what the pimple is supposed to do, transfer the motion to this. And for that it needs to have the right friction, which unfortunately it does not have at this moment. So it still requires a little bit more experimentation. Alright, this is a tour of the uh, underside. Uh, this here is the uh, mechanism for the anti-skating. This is very simple. It's a uh, metal, uh, well, it's not really a lever, it's just some kind of thingy with a spring attached. And this is a 
it's not really quite a circle, but it's a bit of an oval shape. You see when it moves. So when I so when I uh, turn this knob, that's basically what I was controlling there. So um, this uh, screw here adjusts uh, this position, and that's for the queuing lever. This metal. Uh, arm or rod here that can uh, raise up and down when I uh, use the Q control. It's this thing. See when I control this, this part moves, and you see it basically bends. There's a little bit of bending uh, tension in this. Essentially, it's really just a cantilever with two different lengths. <laughs> and here, let's get a screwdriver. Here's a tiny little piston that can compress when this thing presses against it. It essentially pushes against uh, this thing. This is also adjustable, and that piston comes out there and it can push this thing upwards. So that's essentially how the queuing control works. Uh, this guy here is the speed selection. 45, 33, 45, 33. And you see it's connected to a rod. And the rod goes all the way over there. And the thing that's moving up and down, that's our idle wheel. Bit difficult to get a good shot at it, but that's how it goes. And when you hit the start switch, it um, uh, moves the idler wheel in a horizontal position. So now I do start. Oh, I can't trip the mechanism somehow. Maybe because it's in a funny angle, but essentially it goes. A little bit closer to the motor pulley. Um, this is the motor, and here's a switch. That switch is also connected through the mechanism, so it automatically turns on or off. And this here's the mute switch. This is uh, controlled by the Kurvenrad, it's the German term for the uh, cam wheel. And these are some contacts, and when these contacts close, uh, the signal from the tone arm uh, is connected to the amplifier. And when the uh, uh, contacts are open, it essentially mutes it. And this can also be a source of problems. Uh, sometimes you get a little bit of hum and other issues, and those contacts also need to be uh, clean. Uh, this is sort of um, this metal. Uh, sorry, this plastic part here is sort of a cam rocker. It's essentially a lever with a little axle, and it kind of rocks. And here's a pin connected, and it goes here in the curves of the Kurvenrad. And on this end, it uh, connects with the Steuer pimpel. And the idea of the, is that this thing moves. And it controls how this thing goes up and down through that rod and these tracks. And that movement uh, here uh, is supposed to be transferred um, onto the Stoya pimple, which then will move uh, the tone arm. So that's a little uh, tour of the uh, underside of the mechanism. So now I have put a mirror underneath. Let's see if we can see some of it moving. Oh, the start switch does not trip. Oh, I think it needed that. You see there's the Kurvenrad moving. You see how that rod... I don't know if I can poke my screwdriver in it, but this metal piece, uh, sorry, plastic piece, at the end is a rod, is, is a little pin, 
Um, see where I have my mirror now? About there you see that pin uh, lifted up and it's uh, being guided by the kurvenrad. So let's turn and as, and as I turn the platter because the platter is uh, connected through um, a sort of uh, cam again, uh, so sort of a cam with teeth and that Uh, turns first the motion, but the kurvenrad itself does not have teeth all around it. There is a small section where there are a few teeth missing, and that's intentional. And that's uh, well, a bit hard to explain really why that is, but it has to do with the uh, auto shutoff mechanism. And normally the motor um, is it has its own uh, motor axle and that pulley has a diameter, two different diameters and that's why the um, idler wheel can move up and down and when it is in the start position like this the idler wheel is moved in such in, in a horizontal way that it connects to the inner rim of the uh, uh, platter and this way it uh, makes the platter spin and w because the platter is spinning it is also uh, moving its own uh, cork thingy inside on its central hub and that hub uh, thus um, meshes with the uh, teeth in the kurvenrad and that's essentially how this thing works But because of my faulty story pimple, the rest of the mechanism isn't working. But I'll demo it again. As you can see, the kurvenrad has a sort of strange uh, shape in its guide tracks. And that's a sort of uh, a mathematical uh, thing. Uh, I don't know how they call it in English. But in Dutch it's called a kononoide, and it, it, it's, it's sort of a mechanical computer. That, that's probably the best way to describe it, a mechanical computer. The, the, the rotation and the shape of the guide track uh, directs the motion. Try again. Hey, am I seeing that correctly? The, the actual white cam rockers also seems to turn in its central axis. Hey, that's interesting. Oh, and that's essentially how the motion is transferred to the stoya pimple. Hmm, very interesting. Oh, I can play with this stuff for hours. The more you play with it, the more insight you get on how the mechanism works. Of course, I also have the uh, surface manual here which I uh, downloaded of a final engine. Well you need to register first but then you can download uh, the manuals and uh, the combination of this manual and actually looking underneath and moving it uh, gives you a lot of insight in its inner workings. Uh, this is a uh, well here is the mechanism with the idler wheel and this is the motor that's the motor pulley and this thing here is the idler wheel and it can move up and down for 45 and 33. As you can see there's a smaller diameter and there's a slightly wider diameter and that's why this idler wheel also has to be uh, adjusted in that position because when it's uh, in 45 mode it's raised so it touches that smaller part of uh, that uh, more narrow part of the axle.
Um, what it's a, another version, it's a 1225, that one has a different motor. Uh, the 1224 has a two pole motor, which can cause a bit of hum with magnetic cartridges. And this is the uh, 1225 with the four pole motor, that's the Hi Fi version. Uh, that one is a, a bit better, <laughs> believe me. Um, that's an adjustment for the, um, the speed, and that part is here. That's the pitch adjustment. When you put a little gadget in there, uh, like uh, this uh, plastic gadget, you can turn that and it uh, adjusts. Uh, it is basically a fine adjustment for the speed. Normally, when you uh, uh, you, you can put a strobe disc on there and then you can uh, use that to calibrate the speed. Uh, that's a tone arm bearing construction. Here's a bit of the underside that explains uh, a bit of the mechanism. Well, that's really just some electrical connections for the motor. Uh, here's an explanation of the anti-skating device with that spring thingy and that uh, not so round oval thing uh, that's an instruction on how to change the head shell which is really awkward because you have to turn the uh, turntable upside down you have to uh, remove this uh, entire face plate so that this needs to be removed and then you have to remove this metal plate and then you can poke a screwdriver underneath it it's really tricky <laughs> Um, yeah, that's the uh, well. What I explained the the guide mechanism, and there is the uh, adjustment for the cueing lever. That's that adjustment screw, and here's our cantilever thing. Now well, here are some remarks I made, and this uh, following pages uh, explains all. The start cycle and the stop position and the mute switch, how that thing works and how it connects with the Kuvenrad. Yeah, it's a very intricate machine. Oh yeah, muting switch again and here is the explanation of the cycle. And this is the um, little uh, cog that is attached to the um, platter with its uh, teeth and how it meshes with the Kuvenrad and as you can see here there's a small section of teeth missing and that's intentional. Um, and this is another thing. Oh, I don't know exactly what that is. Here are some other adjustments. This um, uh, surface manual also has a uh, troubleshooting guide as you can see with the trouble and the cause and the remedy that's all explained so you can pretty much debug this thing if you have to mm, you see there's a lot of troubles and a lot of causes and a lot of remedies mm, this is a parts list and here is page one of the exploded view and that's not everything because <laughs> there's a lot more because here we have pretty much uh, the rest of it all the tiny little parts and by the way if you have a 1224 and you want a little upgrade you can install a different motor the motor from the 1225 and well that's something I may want to do at some time if I can get hold of one because uh, well that 1225 has a four pole motor which is better so that's a, a possible upgrade you can do and here's another parts list and another parts list and here is the uh, here are two diagrams for lubrication uh, they indicated with uh, numbers uh, which lubricant to use on which part. So, and these lubricants they mention here are all very old school 
lubricants that don't exist anymore. At least the uh, uh, Shell Avania doesn't exist anymore. Uh, sorry for that abrupt end. Uh, someone is entering my room. Uh, well, uh, that pretty much concludes the video. I will uh, hope I have explained a little bit of how it works and I'll hope to see if I can fix it any further and if so then I will show it. Uh, so, thanks for watching.